Thanks so much, Stuart. And now we're going to switch gears and move from the why of social and emotional learning to the how by taking a closer look at the Wellbeing USA resources. To access these resources, you'll start by visiting the Education Plus website, which is simply educationplus.org. And when you arrive, you'll simply hover uh, your cursor cursor over the initiatives uh, box and you'll see the drop down pop up. Click on well-being. To start, there are three learning goals of the Wellbeing USA curriculum. First and foremost, to help promote the social and emotional learning competencies and well-being of young people. Secondly, to help improve self-management and social and self-awareness skill. And finally, to help young people build healthy relationships with themselves, uh, with their immediate community at school and peers, and also with their larger community. Now, when it comes to these resources, here at a glance is what is available to you. We have lesson packages for grades K3, 4, 6, 7, 8, and 9, 12, as well as activity cards for grades K3 and 4, 6. In addition to these materials, we also have a great foundational module and some supplementary uh, educator resources uh, that can help you continue to develop your trauma-informed practice. So while the K-6 lessons are differentiated in terms of skill level so that it's appropriate um, for our learners, they do include the same well-being topics. We always encourage starting first and foremost, and you'll see it there in the um, in the gold with the foundational module. And this is to really set the stage for a safe and a caring learning environment. And then after the stage is set, uh, there are a series of 15 lessons, but really broken out into uh, five chunks. And each uh, series of lessons is really building on the skill that came before it. So if we look at where we start, we start with well-being and mindfulness, continuing to set that foundation before students then go into gratitude, followed by empathy and compassion. Because you need gratitude and empathy and compassion before you can actually understand and fully experience altruism. And finally, students uh, wrap up with uh, uh, skill development on resilience and do a uh, deep reflection of what this experience has meant to them as part of the well-being uh, curriculum. Now for K-6 classrooms, you'll also find activity cards and on the screen are just two examples of what you would find. Uh, but for K-3, you'll find activity cards on feelings and emotions, consent and permission, and healthy communication. And then for our four six as uh, students, we have a series of different activity cards. We have one set on tips for well-being, another set on traits and positive well-being, and uh, finally, we have a set on well-being and how it relates to your brain. So each set of activity cards is five cards in total. Now, for our older students, what we currently offer for grades seven and eight is uh, a series of lessons on healthy relationships. And then for high school students, we have uh, a great unit on mental health literacy and also a lesson package on uh, protecting your online reputation. We do have um, many more exciting resources in the works coming to you shortly, uh, likely within the next six to nine months. Now, in addition to the curriculum pieces for students, here are some supplementary resources for educators. First, we have the educator guide, and this is really where we would recommend that you start even before jumping into the foundational module so that you can actually see the big picture in terms of this curriculum. You get a better understanding of all the resources available scoping and sequence for how each uh, lesson can be done uh, and then it, and all those important educator footnotes. In addition, we have two trauma-informed practice 
modules, and these are brand new. The first is really on an introduction to trauma-informed practice. So um, if you're just learning about it or just really starting to develop your um, your, your practice in this space, this is a great uh, resource to start with. We also have our well-being module, and this module goes a lot deeper into mental well-being, mental health, mental uh, health challenges and issues, how to best support students who might be experiencing um, severe mental illness. Uh, and again, it's all designed through a trauma-informed practice lens. So finally, let's take a quick look at the foundational module. We do want to do a high-level walkthrough of this resource for you. And again, this resource um, is really relevant to uh, all of the grades. We don't have a different foundational module uh, per, per um, grade, uh, grade band. Uh, but again, you'll see that uh, it's really applicable um, for all ages of students. So the great thing about the foundational module is that it it really puts your students in the driver's seat when it comes to the ownership of the brainstorming for each of these lessons and what they want their caring classroom to look like, feel like, and sound like. And then ultimately, they're taking action to make that a reality. So you can see um, all five lessons within this package you, if you're familiar with service learning, will see that they follow the service learning process where students are really starting with inquiry and investigation, really getting a better understanding of what is a safe and caring classroom look like and feel like and sound like before they're then going into lesson three where they're developing their action plan, taking action, and ultimately um, reporting up and out about what they've created and uh, celebrating. So if we look at the next slide, we often get questions about implementation and pacing. So what are some of the best practices around implementation and pacing for the foundational module? We do recommend that the first time you implement the, the lessons in the foundational module that you either dedicate a good chunk of the day to it, ideally a full day, uh, maybe even a half day uh, to um, working through the lessons. Now, if that's not possible, then our next best recommendation would be uh, to do one lesson a day over a consistent five day period um, or definitely within you know a week and a half um, period, because we want to make sure that um, that the uh, tenants and, and what the students are doing stays fresh in their mind and they can literally just pick up where they left off the day before and to continue their ideation and creation. Now, why the, while these lessons are also really great um, for the beginning of the year, you know, when you're just getting back into the routine and you're setting the foundation, they're also terrific to do uh, following the winter break when you might need a bit of a, a restart. You also can use the foundational module as a as uh, an opportunity to reinforce the classroom environment that you're seeking to have, that your students are seeking to have throughout the course of the year.